Hello everybody and welcome along to Cairn Hill Cabin in County Cavan in Ireland and my name is Margaret McKenna. Uh, today I'm going to do something um, a little bit, I suppose it's a little bit different because most of the time we use the brush although we have actually done a palette knife one before. Um, I got this idea really I suppose it was last weekend when we were having or should say not having in this country um, our Bloom Festival which is all about gardens and um, due to the whole restrictions at the moment there was no festival and um, I was actually going to put this on next last weekend and I didn't get a chance to so I'm going to do it now so I did a painting based on a beautiful garden I think that is really world wide renowned garden which is Monet's garden in Giverny in France in near not too far from Paris we were lucky enough last year to actually get a chance to see it and it is an absolutely amazing place and you can really see why Monet would have been totally inspired by it. It's, just, it's just beautiful it was crowds there it was tourists like falling over each other but it was the atmosphere was still wonderful even it was so hot a day too but you know even with all the crowds there it didn't seem to take away from from the beauty of the place and um, just the atmosphere of the place is just amazing and even the house you can go in and see his paintings well a lot of them are replicas but even so it just gives that whole feeling of quite an artist kind of paradise an artist um, haven really for yeah for an artist so um so this is based this is what i would call this is a palette knife sketch really um it's done it's a quick palette knife sketch and i think it really works it's a good idea because um the whole idea of trying to capturing that idea of light and shade and um being able to you know get it's a different country the different colors against each other it's a whole mass of different colors really the reflection in the water um and really which which is which is really what it's about and and also i do i'm approaching it slightly different because often i will say in a lot of the pictures i say well i, I do the back around first and i work from back to front when i'm doing this kind of palette knife picture it's more of um what would you say kind of like a juxtaposition i love that word uh, of, of the different colors against each other light and shade rather than sort of background middle ground foreground there is some elements of that but it's it's really a case of layering on the paint and one color against another so um yeah so I, well i will start by doing it basically we'll, we'll start a little bit of the sky so i've just got a little plastic um palette knife here just a very basic cheap one here it's got full of paint in fact i should take some of that paint off anyway and i'm just going to give it a little depth on water and then just give it a dab on so just to kind of wet it up a little bit and to start with for the sky i'm going to start with just a little i have my wonderful amazing um palette knife uh, or i should say palette boards here which are chicken um chicken slice trays i think and um and i'm just going to add a little bit of my it's a ceridian blue into some white here and i'm just going to get it up like nice and thick and i'm just going to start to i'm doing it from actually the original one i did from a photograph so you'll see it'll be into this will be quite because it's so much of a dab dab you really won't be copying it it'll be really a case of um trying to create each time you do a picture of course you have to be careful not to lose that spontaneity of the first one that you don't kind of try and copy because you never copy you like to get that little dot in there or that little dot there that's not going to happen and don't ever try and do that that's one thing you don't do you don't you just try and do your version of the next version the next one so this is what i'm, I'm going to start with the, sort of the sky so this is cerulean blue and a little bit of white and i'm just layering it on just a bit like just like this here and what we're going to do next is I'm going to start. I'm just going to put the colours out as I go along. Um, actually, spent I was out a lot of the day earlier on looking for a poor little lost dog up in Mullamine Forest. So I've already done a, we've done about ten k around the place, and unfortunately no success. So I've, I'm kind of a little bit all sort of bit unexpected to be doing that today. So we'll use some um, burnt umber here. This is kind of like a shadowy colour, and I'm going to put out my old. These are my kind of. I might kind of fall back on shadow shades, my burnt umber and my ultramarine here. And I'm just putting, I'm using acrylic. And you can see I'm using different types of acrylic. These are the big ones here because they're just handy because I use certain colours I use a lot of. So I use a lot of um a lot of ultramarine. I'm just trying to get out of the tube now. This is the thing. Um, that's to get stuck at the top. I'll just give that a, a thing with the, with the brush there. Ah, that's better. Um because I might use a bit of this and I'm going to use an olive green as well for, for the so it's kind of a brown um, burnt umber ultramarine and an olive green I'm using here and I'm going to use a bit of a mix of these together and I'm actually going to grab a bit of white as well onto that just a bit of white here 
I mix these together here like this. And it's just a very rough mix. And I have a little, now a little bit of the, the white into it as well. And I'm going to put dab these now into the background shades. This is sort of the, these background sort of trees here. Might add a bit more slight bluey green here than that. Like that. And I'm just going to bring it down about here. So it's about trying to capture that shade, that shadow and light together. And I'm literally just dabbing from one area into the next. And sometimes these will go very blue. And that's fine. You can add a bit of the brown on top of that. You let the shades go in between each other. So I'm just going to map this out. I'm going to leave a bit of a space for this tree. But the, it'll be thick. It'll be much thicker than this. I'll build it out. This is actually quite thick. If you run your hand across that, it's it's quite bumpy. If I did that now in oils, it would take forever to dry now. It would, you wouldn't be running your hands across it. You would smudge it. It would be all over your hands. Acrylic is, is good that way. It dries very fast. Um, but oils are great now for doing this kind of work. But it would take it takes forever to dry. Especially when it's so thick. I did a sunflower once and I think it took about six months for it to get even touch dry. So I'm going to add little bits of light later on to that. So just I'm going to just bring this in like this initially. Now I'm going to start, so you can already see where there's gaps here, which are going to be the sort of the, for the trees. And we'll put a little bit of texture into them in a minute. And I'm going to, now I'm going to map out where my, where my land is, as it were. So I'm going to have, I hope this is not in the way, is it? No, it's not. Okay. We're going to just get this line here. This is roughly the edge of the stream here, or the river or whatever it is. Across here like that. Just literally marking it out in any colour. And then there's a line across here, which is the far bank, which is, let me see, about there, let's say. And you can now see there, just that's, that's all the drawing that's really involved in the picture. So there's very little drawing involved, as you can see. And I'm going to say so we can have the bank here and I'm going to come up about here to get that darkness under the tree, under the weeping willow there that's at the side. There's some beautiful willow, weeping willows on, the, in the, on that area. And there's a dark patch coming down here. Now what I'm going to do is, at this stage, I'm actually going to bring some of the dark shades through the water. And we can put some light ones on top as well in places afterwards. So I want, to make, I want to make it quite dark in the foreground. We can lighten up some of the areas later on. So again, it's the same mixture. Same mixture is a bit of blue and a brown and a green here. Um, olive green I'm using. You can use sap green. It'll be quite good too. I just happen to have the olive green here to hand. And it, yeah, I'm just going to put... Put some here and we just get a bit in this area here as well. So we're just going to, I might add in more now in a minute, but just right now, I'm just going to just get a certain amount in and we'll build it up from there as it were. I'm just getting them roughly, because if you notice the colours here are in, uh, these reflections are sort of more or less reflecting really what's above them on the ground on the top end as well. So here we have here. And I'm just going to bring in some of the dark shades. We can add more in later on if we need to. And you can see how rough I'm doing it. This is just, it's really, and I, I noticed the other thing I want to say is I'm working up and down. You notice I'm not working across. I'm not so fussed about these ones because I will put dabby dabby bits in there in a minute. But this bit, I want kind of an upward. I don't want a cross. I want upwards at the moment. And that's why you get that lovely reflection feel. And I'm, uh, um, it's because of the, the cross the, of the lily pads and all coming on it later on gives it that lovely, um, sense of reflection on a still water so keep it keep it keep it upwards at the moment or downwards it isn't whichever up and down so it's vertical is the word i'm looking for vertical that's it and i've got a few put a few dabby bits in here now these bits i can dab in this is some of the some of the shade the shadow areas in this grassy area in front now i might just bring this up a little bit because i'm kind of on the that's a bit better i think Otherwise, I'll miss the top, the top, the bottom of. I know it's a bit loose on the bottom. Makes it a little bit harder. This, by the way, is paper. I'm doing it on. I'm doing it on um multimedia paper. Um, and it's quite good actually. It's not bad. You can use it. You can, it's good for pen. You know, it's a nice pencil work as well. It's really it's good quality paper. So it takes um all kinds of um material or media. It takes um it would take oils as well, and it would take uh, as I say pencils obviously and um, and acrylics. So I'd, I'd rather like working out. There's no grain on it. That's the only thing. But it's still quite nice. Um, I've used it a few good bit now lately. In fact, most of the work I've done lately, I've done on it. And it doesn't soak through. And it, it holds it pretty well. So it's going a bit more there. 
Yeah. Okay. So you can sort of start to see a pattern already. You can see like this is, you know, what's happening here a little bit. So I'm just going to wash off my, my thing a bit, a bit of palette, just very roughly. And we're going to start putting in some of the trees. So for the trees, I'm going to start using some of my greens now. Um, so I'm going to put some of my, I have olive green, sap green would be quite good too. Um, and I'm going to put a little bit of, little, little different shades out here. I want to get some yellow. So I'm using a cadmium, it is a cadmium yellow, yeah it is. So it's a, it's a, a real basic kind of strong, good yellow here. Um, and I'm going to use that for the big one. So I might have to put that hole in that again because it dries up very fast. Should I should have used this one. Those they dry very fast, so they do. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze out some here. I deliberately didn't put it on the tray because it's quite warm in here in the in this cabin here. So um, even if you left it out for an hour, so, oh god, that nearly went on the floor. Um, if you went it um, if you left this out for an hour, it would start to dry up very fast. Okay, and I want to put a little bit. We have the white out already, and I want to put some yellow ochre if i can find my yellow ochre here it is so a little bit of yellow ochre yellow ochre is a great color for sort of calming down i call it a, I call it a calming down colors um it stops the, the colors getting in um, very garish the greens so i'm going to start with a few of these so i'm going to make a like kind of a sort of yellowy green with a bit of yellow ochre into it as well we can lighten darken it after so we're just going to put a little bit start putting the dabs in here so we can tap it up and you can just tip it along with tip it's like tip 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 and, you, and it's different shades can go through it at different times so you don't have to have it you're not mixing it thoroughly it's almost like going from one to the other and we can bring that up here like that and we put another little bit now for the weeping willow we're going to come down now that went very very yellow rocky but we can just Again, this is going to go up and down because remember the, the shape of the, the 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 overall shape of the weeping willow is that it's quite weepy basically. So it just droops down a lot. And I'm going to make it slightly darker this side, so more of the greens coming in here. Tap it, tip, tip, tip. And that's lots of the yellows coming down here. It's like a little bit of blob there. It's like a bird flying in the sky. We can get rid of it or we can move it. We'll see what happens later on. Just move it. Yeah. So we get some of the light in here. We get to see that we let that. Actually, it's good to have the dark. You see, it's naturally picking up some of the dark background color, which is quite good. Because what's happening then is, you see, you're actually getting some of the. It's actually automatically taking a shadow shade already. Um, now, I'm going to put a little bit on this one here. So we're going to get a bit again, a green and a yellow, and a little bit of our yellow ochre shades. And I'm just going to tap them along in here. Oops, I went a bit too green. That's grand. If it does that, you just take it off and then just come back in with your, with your yellowy shades here. Now tap that along up here. And I'll drag, bring that up a little higher. And it's going to bring it down to here. There's a fly buzzing around here and being really annoying. And I'm actually going to bring in a little bit of my other tray here because I'm going to use a little bit of brown and blue. So I have my ultramarine here and I have my brown here. And we can use little bits of even ultramarine into the shadow shades, which is quite nice. And even some of the real browns in here as well. And dab a bit of the greens into it as well. So we can make it nice and thick. You know, there's no... So it's literally different shades all happening at the same time. let that tip that in there like that and each time you do this it's going to be a bit different from the next one that's what I kind of like about it because it's really fun to see what way it's going to turn out each time don't get caught up in it so because every time you do it it'll be slightly different so you don't say oh well I got I feel I got that little dab of something because that little dab of whatever it is may not suit your new version of the picture if that makes sense because sometimes you know your, your the other shades might be slightly different um, it's really hard say, to get, for example, even getting exact colours. If you think of when you go into a, I've said this before, if you go into a paint shop and you get them to mix up your colours for you, they will always tell you don't don't stop a colour in the middle of a wall if they have this one that's actually being made up in the shop because um, it's really hard to actually get exact mix again. So even for yourself when you're painting, 
don't kind of get caught up too much in an exact shade um i just get a bit of white here nice bit of white on the pit on it here just want to have that on the ready so we just go back to our coloring here our shading i should say and i'm just going to now we start to bring i'm going to start to bring some of the bank color in here so i'm actually going to introduce a little bit of a where's my other color i'm looking for my colors here I have another color here this is this is a really nice pale a pale olive color it's called um a lot that you can mix a lot of white in with your olive and make it too if you have that if you work just as well um oh thanks tony thank you um let's see this is it's really like a sketch really um it's it's like a um, quick sketch it, it really which is kind of an impressionist very much an impressionist idea and of course impressionist came from a lot of the time from old plein air painting and they were painting outside and they were just trying to capture a mood it was i think it was when they started doing impressionism it was very much influenced by photography which might seem contradictory because the whole idea of impressionism in one way is an impression rather than a very exact replica of a full photograph and in perhaps maybe it was the whole idea like photography was sort of taking the realism part whereas the um this was all about light and shade and color and it was also about capturing a moment in painting which of course photography was starting to do at this time but they were doing it in paints instead and that's it was often done outside and of course certainly in ireland you'd definitely want to be doing it in a sketch version because god knows what, what weather you'd be having from moment to moment so i'm going to mix a little bit of my my two i'm going to get a bit of my dark olive actually where's my dark here it is and i'm mixing a bit of light olive with it as well actually which i know you could make up and i'm just going to start adding in a bit of the grass shade in here underneath this is sort of underneath the trees this is the bank really along here and we just blend it about here oh, i like that bit of, oh that nearly yellow there went i'm just gonna just drag it along here like that so it's a light olive dark olive and a bit of um a little bit of white too too and you start to see the bank building up i'll come in with our bush now in a minute and i'm going to bring it a little more a little darker of the olive here along here with a little bit of white into it you kind of play oh that's a bit too white now so we can bring that down a little bit to the bank here like that we can add in our shade the shadowy bits afterwards oh in fact we'll add in our light bit on top later on as well so we'll just come in here like this for now i'm going to put another little bit along here as well might add a little bit of yellow into that just to give it a bit of a sunnier feel if you put a bit of yellow into something it immediately gets sunny okay a bit too sunny but anyway well maybe not I might leave that there actually i kind of like that a little bit more into this side too i think a nice bit it's kind of shadowed but it's still kind of shaded within the sunlight as it were so don't make it too dark now i'm actually going to get a bit of white with just mix it with my yellow on its own so you get a lovely really bright pale pale yellow and there might be hints of green left over because I haven't washed the brush, so I'm going to put bits of this along here. I'm going to just dab it, just a little dab it on top so that it just sticks on top of the surface of the paint. And little bits up here we will as well. Yep. Don't mind if you drag some of the dark shadow down, that's okay. I'm going to put a little bit in here, like that. And we're going to put a little bit over this side. So we'll put a little bit more yellow. It's got a bit whitish there. So the sun is just catching the light. Really, really light bits there. Now, okay. So now I'm going to come on to our weeping willow here. So it's the same as the other weeping willow, re willow really. It's got um, bits of your yellow, your olive green, bits of your yellow ochre and we'll just drag it up and down and i actually put a bit of white through it too so we're going to put it work it up and down like this kind of at an awkward angle here now because i'm trying to get you to see it as well so i'm kind of don't mind if i'm it's not the perfect angle for doing a picture and i'm going to keep the lines going sort of downwards strokes all the time and i'm kind of literally taking up several colors on the brush at the same time so that's why sometimes it's more green, sometimes it's a little bit more sort of yellow ochre. And I might even put a little bit of our pale olive in the middle of that just to give it a 
So there's a bit there. I think that might go up quite nice. Yeah. So we're doing a little bit of it's literally like you'd see there's three or four different colors on the palette there you can see it okay see there so and they and they just work down like that i don't mind if it goes too thick just drag it down you see drag it down and if it goes too you can keep it see like that there now you see the yellow coming through underneath that like there's different shades coming through in here and actually what i did on the original one here i put some white coming through it as well and then I went over it with some of the other shades. So I gave it a really paler kind of a feel because the sun is really on this. I need to get some more white out. I'm running out of white. It's amazing how quick you go through your white. White is this colour you go through a lot of. Um, I find some depends on the, it depends on the picture. Sometimes I don't use any of it hardly, but it varies a lot. And it depends. Some people don't use much white. I see now. See the way I'm just letting the white be there underneath? And then I'm letting the dra I'm dragging the other yellow colours on top. So we're gonna go here like that. Again, as I said, I'm in a very awkward angle here, so it's taking a bit longer than it did. It is. I know I'm working quick, but and I'm using a bit of my light olive green there. If you had dark olive and just mix it up, you'd get a light olive. So it's quite like a sap green kind of an olive green, and you know, it depends. It depends again on what the makeup paint you have. Um, some of the they have different shades. It's amazing how they vary from make to make. They really do vary a lot. Now I'm going to put a bit more white into that. I want to just lighten this up a bit. Little bits of it. And little bits of greeny colour coming through here as well. Don't make it too light. So I'll put a little bit of green in there. Yellow through it here in places. I'll put it down here like that. Now I have another color. I have the shade of the um. I have a bit of alizarin crimson here, and the alizarin crimson I'm going to use on this other bush, along with um little bits of our. I have a pale violet as well. Which is like a very you know, really this pale violet. You see, it's a lovely, it's a lovely shade actually. Um, there it is. There, it's a really nice shade. Um, and it's, I'm just gonna mix a couple of little bits of those together, mostly, most well, very roughly together again, as I've done it. And I'm just getting that dab along. In here on this one. I'm gonna dab this. So you can start to see the whole bank now, kind of making taking shape as it were. And bring it right down to the to the water line here like that it's quite a fun it's a very good way to, to paint in a way with the, with the palette knife especially if, especially if you're actually afraid of painting because it's one that's really um hi brendan how are you um it's it's very it's, it's great because what it does is it um it allows you to be very free you know what i mean you can't get too caught up in details which is which is great because it, it means that you have to you have to experiment you have to not be afraid in a sense you know and just enjoy it which i think is most important don't get too caught up in things now i'm going in back some of the deeper the deeper um the deeper um lizard and crimson here as I say, it's a great color for doing skies and that it's a it's a lovely um it mixes very well to get lovely sunset type of shades i love using it um for that for that kind of purpose especially now i'm going to come back with my pale olive and just tip it along up here a bit more See, it'll take some of the under colour with it because you've got a lot of the under. See, like that, along with that there. And I'm gonna, I make, I'm gonna add a bit of my brown and my blue, my ultramarine and my, um, my what you call it, my burn, um, burnt, raw, burnt umber, in here just to give it a nice shadow. But you can have see some of the little light bits coming through too, because and a kind of little bit of that shadow in here as well. There's quite strong shadows here because the sun is quite quite strong really and I'm actually I'm, I'm not I see this area here I'm going to put a bit more of my greeny area in here because I want to create a sort of a shadow coming from that tree across there like that now we're going to work a little bit oh yes I want to work a little bit in this corner here so I'm going to use a little bit of more of my dark up to about here I'd say yeah I'm going to add my bit of my dark brown my blue and my green and I'm just going to colour in get this bit in here quite dark like the far bank 
Okay, this is all very much in shadow here, that bit there. I'm just going to bring it in there like that. And now we're going to start to work on the water here. So I want to get a few different... Now, again, we're going to keep these shades going down. So I'm going to add a little bit, basically sort of reflecting roughly-ish. You see that kind of colour there? You see a little bit of the your um, pale olive shades going through on this side here. But I might do it. It's slightly different on this. So I'm kind of just going to go with sort of a, an idea of what... I don't, can you see the edge of the page now? Yeah, you can now. Yeah. Trying to make sure... As you're going to get it so i'm just going to drag it down like that it's slightly different from this but that's because the top bit is a bit different so i'm just deliberately doing it and that's what i say every time you do this picture it will be a little bit different um and i'm going to do the same on this side then i'm going to add a bit of this set of lighter one here and again it's just like dragging the reflection here there's a nice whitish bit here which i think is rather nice and it works quite well i don't know what i was doing there putting the white in that one but it works nice so i'm going to put it there and let's drag it down a bit. And then I'm going to start putting this, my shades here, my my reflections of this area here. Now I'm going to come back up with more dark shades now in a minute. And a little bit of my pale olives as well. And I can put a nice light, my light one here. See, so we're getting a real mix. But you get the idea that it's the reflections coming through, you see. And... Oh, I'm not knocking down. Oh God, thank God that that landed the right way, which is good because I often I knock the paints during the middle of a live stream and have a big lump of paint on the floor at the end of it. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna put a little bit of these set of shades here, a little bit of the greens, a bit darker than that, and I'm gonna go right up to the top in a minute. And I'm gonna bring that. I'm gonna put more dark one up through that in a minute now, actually, and then we're gonna put this one here. Well, right, let's see. I might even bother doing that one. Let's see how it works. Let's see how it goes. Might even bother. Now, I want to get a nice. There's a nice shade I have here, which is called a um, a deep turquoise. And I'm going to use a little bit of it. See that one there? You can see it. It's hard for me to see, but you. It's very hard to me looking into that. Um, hello, Noel. Hi, Yvonne. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit of this with a little bit of my white. So this might, and I'm just going to flicking it down like that and now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to see this little area here it's a little bit of a light bit of land coming out here so it's a really sunny bit so I'm going to again mix in my my green really my olive green with my yellow and I'm going to make this it'll overlap a little bit with this and I might actually add some more yellow on top of that in a minute come back with a bit of that and I'm going to bring that there like that So I'm just going to bring, I might put a bit of tip, a little bit of the real, actually a bit of yellow and white actually. My yellow and white, because that'll give a nice bit of sun on that, look. I said the sun is just catching that there. I'm going to bring a, bring a bit of that coming down here as well. Onto that tree, just so that tree that it's catching the light. I'll go to the edge of the page again now. But okay, now what I want to do is, I'm, I'm going to bring a bit more dark here because it's, I want this, it to show up against this. So I'm going to go back to my black, my blacky colour, which I'm going to black is dark brown which is my ultramarine and my burnt um umber and i'm going to just bring it back up because these are the foreground here so i want to kind of i'm going to bring it back up from i want to have it dark enough here and just kind of let it because we're going to have it get a bit more of that i want it to show up against the other in a minute I do. That's the important thing. Is you kind of let colors they show up against each other when they're contrasted in, in shade. Is it? That's what I want. The shot. I want the contrast of shades. Now it's coming a nice little light bit. So I do like in the original one. I like this light little light bit that's coming down here, which would correspond, of course, to that. Because it is kind of the you are kind of corresponding with it. Now we're going to put in some of our lily pads. So the lily pads are really easy to do. Basically, they're just going across. So we have a nice little variety of different shades. We have our light olive green, for example. And we'll just tap it along like this. And we're going crossways this time. 
I just do a few more here like that. Oop, don't make don't make it too much on it. Like that. And we can do a few more over we do a few more here in the foreground. And some of them are kind of bunched together, so they won't all be individual like this because remember they're all they don't all sit on their own. And when you do a cross line across on a down um, stroke, it's that's what gives you that lovely kind of feeling of a reflection on the water. Um, and it's very simply done, as you can see. Um, okay, I have to get my white which I let fall on the floor. As I always do, let something fall on the floor at some stage. Okay, so here we have a bit of white. And I'm going to mix my yellow a bit more with that so because I want to get some nice bright ones really bright ones. so like the sun is really sh hitting these like really nice and bright so we're going to put them across some across here so i'm going to have to just hold this down to canvas down because it's a bit it's coming up here and i can't actually oh look black came in there like that i want to get more on that and not on my hand as i just done and that's the usual way. I usually come out of these pictures and most of there's more paint on me than on the pictures. Everything I have, every bit of clothes I have, there's paint on it nearly everything. Okay, so there we go. And I want to get some, I'm using some nice different shades, so I'm going to even go for my, um, where's my cerulean I had earlier on here, a little bit of the cerulean, and mix a bit of white with the cerulean, cerulean blue. Um, that's not the cerulean blue. Sorry, here's my cerulean blue. I knew that wasn't cerulean. What am I doing? Here we go. Sorry, this is the cerulean blue. Nice, bright. And I'm going to put a bit of that coming across. So it's good. You definitely have to be stick to your colours. Keep that so you get like, so you get that lovely feeling of going backwards and forwards across the water like that. And we're going to use a little bit of our, our violet as well. We can use our violet the same exactly bring it across oh, a bit too much um thing went on it let's get a bit of clean bit here fresh bit okay fresh bit of violet and we'll drag a bit a few of them across like that and we put them wherever we want like you know i'm not religiously trying to copy exactly the same as i did on the other side you don't try and copy everything just sort of think maybe where would be nice one to put one maybe something across here would be quite nice that oh my black blue take that I'm gonna, and the great thing about it is because it's on the surface you can really kind of you can play with it a little bit too and take bits out or make little shapes with it so i'm going to take a little scratch of that a little bit because it was a big lump kind of went in there a bit so i'm literally going to take it out with with the thing there like that That's what I like about it. It's, it's a bit of fun. You can have a bit of fun with it, like play around with it. I stretch that out there like that. Okay, now I want to go into the foreground. So the foreground really is a real mix of colour. So we have, let me see, we have a bit of, for example, you can start to add some of your flower shape colours, for example. So I have sort of like nice kind of, this nice reddishy, and I know there's not the dark areas, but they'll all work out in a minute. Oh, look, there's a bit of blue vent in there. So I was really casual with this. There was lots of different shades coming through here. And just tapping them up and down. There's bits of the violet. They're kind of like foxglovey kind of sort of thingies. I don't know, or lupin or whatever. No, I don't know. I look, don't ask me. I'm no great. I'm not great at my flowers. I'm afraid. I'm definitely not going to. I mean, I like the gardening, but... My knowledge on flowers is not great. Anyway, there's probably lots of different types of flowers that they have growing over there that we don't even grow here. And I'm going to add, actually I might add a darker, I have a darker purple shade here, which is a darker violet, and it's really nice actually. And I think I used it yesterday actually. I'm going to just, again, try to put this. There we go again, knocking things again. Sometimes it's very hard to get the get the um paint out. It's just easy to take off the whole lid. So there we go. Take that off, and I'm going to put some of this here as well in here as well. Just little dabs of it in different places. 
but I'm probably going to go over these a little bit now with the greens anyway so I'm going to be it'll be backwards and forwards sorry I just need to get this green here the greens that fell around now here we go I'm going to start to getting in the greens so we're going to just this is going to be a real mix and match kind of a place so I'm actually going to be bringing in my ultramarine into it and I want to get a bit more of my olive green as well and put them all out here together so we're gonna have nice lots of shades so it's literally olive green it's like light olive green there's ultramarine there's yellow um there's all different kind of shades of green and you can see you can see some of the different and i'm going to go over this light this dark area as well because it's almost like there's a depth where it's really dark where the color the shades are really dark it's like in the undergrowth and then it kind of comes up to the to the, the lighter bits on top and i can put some of the lighter lighter greens kind of and it's little smaller strokes I'm using. And they're a little bit higgledy-piggledy in different directions. And that's to indicate it's like an undergrowth. It's kind of, you know, there's leaves in all directions. You're not going to have leaves that are... I'm at kind of an odd angle here. So I know I'm kind of moved around here a bit. So you have a darker shade. So this is maybe a shadowed area here. And I know I might tip some of my flowers. But we'll go back over the flowers a little bit. We're just sort of indicating where they were at that time. So that's what we do. We kind of move backwards and forwards on it. So I'll do that later on in a minute. And then we're just going to flick it. Lots of little bits here. Just put it. Let that go in the dark. We could add nice bits of yellow into it. Oh, not that big a lump. And that'll just indicate there could be a bit of sunlight hitting it in some places. Like in the, in the middle midst of the, the shadow there will be sun. And again we're going to come back with our darker greens. A bit of blue. The, the bit of ultramarine gives it a kind of a shadow sense to it too, you see. So it's quite you can see how relaxed how messy it is. It's a nice sort of messy kind of one, but it gives it a lovely effect at the same time. So I'm gonna just bit here like that. So I'm going in between my flowers, but I'm not being too fussy because I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna flick back on top of them anyway. So it was more just given in this as an indication. We get a bit, we can add a bit of our ultramarine, or not our ultramarine, a bit of our yellow ochre into the middle of it as well. We could put some nice in. And I'm hardly looking at this now. I'm kind of, I'm off my other world at the moment now. Just doing it to my own, my new version of this. I'm going to get a bit more, yeah, a bit more of this, the yellowy kind of thing there. And we might put some darker ones coming up here just. And then we'll go into this area here, across there. And we'll add a bit more sh light and shade in a minute. And then we've got a few more in here. Now I'm bringing a nice sunny bit in here. But we can add a dark shadowy bit too in the middle of it now. Sort of a darker shade in here. We can add the dark bit of the blues in there, make it nice and shadowy. Well, you can see it's quite different. I've actually more purpley flowers or pinky flowers in there, and there was more bluey ones, but we'll add some bluey ones in a minute. I'm just going to come up here with a couple little bits of my so just like that and we can just literally go across forward and back across it so that we're and you see I can change the shape the for direction of the brush I turn it in different directions because that gives it that kind of a leafy kind of a look because here I might even add a bit of my brown in there somewhere. My ultramarine, or not my ultramarine, my burnt umber, I should say. And the reason is it can give some nice depth into it in places. So I might go back in there with that, in here a bit. If you mix the blue and the brown together, it goes, it gives a real dark kind of a shade. And it's nice to have the dark because what it does is it emphasizes, it brings out the, the light bits. You know, if you if you deepen the shadows, often that's enough to set off the contrast, and it bring it makes the um it'll actually bring out the the light part. So you don't actually have to go keep going lighter and lighter. Sometimes just by darkening the the shadowed areas, is a, enough to bring out the light. Because look, if I darken that, you can see how much brighter the areas around it are, suddenly become. 
often in a painting when it's not working it's often as much to do with the lack of uh, lack of um contrast so just look back over a painting sometimes if you, if you think god what's wrong with it and think about the contrast in a picture and of course i know when you get in dull weather if you don't get an awful lot of contrast but um the light and shade is lovely to capture i think in a picture you get that idea of sunlight and shadow now i'm going to add a few more bits of i'm going to add a bit of my purpley bits in here oh i've hit my light up i have the two purples up here at the, at the same time there's a bit of a red in there too i'm going to add a few more bits a few more pinky bits maybe that's my red my oh, my crimson it's my alizarin crimson and my white together and it kind of has different shades going through it. A little bit down here as well. Oops, and you just wipe your, you just have to wipe your, um, most of the time you just have to wipe your thing, your uh, palette knife in between. You could add bits of white, you could see your cerulean with a little bit of blue in it. It gives it a nice. You could add a few of these throughout it. God know God knows what kind of flower these are. I have no clue. It's my new my new botanist, my new uh, inventions. And they're in the shade, remember, so you're not going to see them. You'll see them, but they won't be kind of as bright as if they would be in the sun. Because this side of the of the, the um the, the the water is actually much much more uh, shadowed. And then we're just going to put in a few more of these little, few little tips of the yellowy bits. And it's just like as if the sunlight. Oh, actually, that's yeah, that works actually. The sunlight is just catching an edge of the. Of the thing here, water, or the, not the water, the, the bank. Because remember, the sunlight will dip, come in and out through it, remember, in places. And I think we're, yeah, there we go. So it's really liter like literally a sketch, really, is what we're doing. It's like a capturing just a little bit of light and shade and colour. And a lot to do with the light and shade and a bit of the sunlight catching catching place. You can kind of grab a little bit of sunlight in the middle of a shadow, for example. And it just gives it a lovely little tip, tip, tip. And it's a lot more of a tips kind of along there. We might put a little bit of a, a few more of these little fellas going across here. And then add a bit more of the lighty bit in here. Gives it a nice, a bit of a darker one there. So it just gives it a nice, so just gives it a little bit of a, and that's it. And then just this background bit, I just want to come in here a little bit and just, just because they're a bit too um, up and downy there. So I'm just going to just grab a few little flicky bits in there. But I'm not putting these heavy much heavier towards the front the reason being it's more um it's more background so you won't it's going to be it's almost like as if it's it's not as heavy you're not going to take you don't see the texture as much in the background as you would in the foreground but you can see an odd edges up and down a bit because it's like the trees are they won't be all in lines so i'm just going to break some of those Ooh, there's a bit of light came through and that looks quite okay so just literally, literally just an idea that they are bushes rather than if you go up and down they look look a bit too much they could be buildings nearly instead so by putting a little bit of a, a shade on them or a little sort of a squiggle on them or something it gives a feeling of being a trees and and shrubbery rather than um rather than straight walls or anything like that i'm going to go in with a little darkness in here as well and i could drag some of that dark up in places so you can work your way back up into it like that look now that's it little bits in here oh make it a bit just deeper in there a 
I say there, oh yes, and I want what I wanted to do. I want to draw a line across my bank here, the bottom of my bank. This is the division between the water. And there is a kind of an area where the, it's kind of like in between the, the rock, it's kind of soil, I suppose, or whatever. And it's almost like a line that goes along the edge of the bank because the grass doesn't quite come up to it. And it's just a very edge, the tip of the line. You can hit and miss this a bit. You don't have to do this solid across. In fact, don't do it too solid because it'll look a bit too like a, like you've just drawn a line. So you can hit, it's just kind of get patches of it. Tip it along in places. In some places you won't hardly have any and then the others you'll have a bit more depth. Fine, it just helps to see it helps to divide. I'm just going to just let that go a little bit more. I might grab a little bit of green on top of that. Yeah, that's it now. And same here, right? Just a little edge on that one there as well. Make a little bit of a reflection underneath. I might just grab a little bit of that light bit there as well. And there we go. And that's basically it, really. Um, I'm kind of happy enough with that. It's as I say, it's like a sketch. It's like a quick. Um, well, how long is it? I don't have a time on me, but it's basically a kind of sketch idea of trying to create that idea of light and shade. So that's you have the water going down. You put the cross when you put the cross, uh, the lily pads, or it could be even um reflections. Um, when you do that, it also it'll give the same impression of um of, of just a nice sort of sh very smooth water, um. And the next thing is, as I say, watch you get a little bit of texture here, but not too much texture, much more texture down the front. And you really, it's just kind of light and shade, bring the dark ones up against the light ones, add the little dabs of color. Don't try and religiously copy what you've done already, or even, even if it's a photograph. Um, you know, just try and kind of get the idea, get what you think you're trying to come across when you're doing a photograph or when you're painting a photograph, I mean. Um, or even a scene. Is it the light? Is it the shade? Is it the is it the atmosphere? Some kind of atmosphere you're trying to get. Uh, is it the color? Is it the composition? And if you capture that in your picture, um, that's really when what I think is important about a picture, um, rather than trying to actually get every single detail, especially when obviously when it's done like something like this, it's like a sketch, as I say, and you're trying to really just get the overall idea of of um, of the of the light and shade and the and the uh, and the the idea depth of water there as well which is quite important um and of course lots of different colors in it too which is quite nice i think that's that's what i loved about it because it's money's garden is full of color and definitely if you ever ever get a chance when we are able to travel and if you ever get a chance to go to france and to visit his garden i would more than recommend it because it is just beautiful and even with all the crowds there it is just brilliant because i must say that they have a great the people were also they were literally from every corner of the globe i mean literally every corner of the globe and everybody just seemed so courteous to each other everybody was really you know despite all the crowds there was no rush there was everybody was just really taking it all in and everybody was on the same page as it were and enjoying it for the same reason and you can really see how he, he left this lovely legacy of his work and his gardens for people to enjoy Okay, so that's it, everybody. And I'm going to put this, as I say, up on YouTube later on. I have a few now to put up on YouTube. And um, I say you can, you can share it away for people. Um, it would be great. And uh, let them enjoy it. And hopefully pick up a few little tips along the way. If they, if they, if they you know, if, and get them, encourage them to give it a go. Because don't be afraid. That's the main thing. And so hopefully next week I'll do something new. And if, I've any, if you have any suggestions of what you'd like to see done, please um, put them in the comments. And I'll... Um, and, I, and I'll try and uh, oblige as it were. And any questions you have, answer, ask me, please. Thanks. Bye-bye.